And there we go. We're alive again. Everything seems fine. Yep. So. As to the title for this, for today's stream, I'm going to be playing... Oh, try not to hit my microphone. I'm going to be playing 5.0. Most likely just swapping between Japan, America, Britain maybe, but I do have a line up ready? No. And as the, the second half of the title explains, Wingling Dragon, a air simulator streamer, is make is in a progress in the process of making an event that's both air sim oriented and naval oriented. And he's having another test run of that event tonight in an hour and a half. So I'm going to be streaming that as well. Of course I won't be hopping into any kind of voice calls or stuff for that. But I think it's something worthwhile streaming. It's, I've, I've participated in two tests of that event already. The first one was a bit lackluster for the naval side. The second one was very interesting, though. So I'm... Although it, it had some hiccups that had, didn't mean that it had to be stopped halfway through. We'll have to see what will happen tonight. But yes. 5-0 lineups. Let me just make the other 5-0 lineups as well. And I need to clear out my lineups again some point. I'll we'll just prepare the other lineups. I can quickly switch between nations. And that's already a 5 lineup. Perfect. I don't have one for the Germans yet, do I? Not ready. Can I add another? I can add another. Nope. Hello, Deutschland. Just making my lineups. No. It, the, the event Wingling is making is really... There's a lot of AI stuff going on in it. Really a lot. It's a, it's a very fun event. I've... Well, especially the latest version of it was really, really fun. In my opinion. Because of the, the way the AI airways have been programmed. Now. The problem with Italy is that their f cruisers don't actually start at 5 they start at 4 7. So I'll, I'll, I'll see if I can do 5 0 lineup though. And it's really, it's nothing like Navy Sea. It's, it's way more... Oh, how to explain this? Well, I don't have to explain it. In an hour and a half, you'll see for yourself if you're still watching. And if you're not still watching, the video of the stream will always be available so you can watch it later. Um, but we are starting off tonight with a Japan 5.0. It's not like that there's air tasks for that event, it's more that there's there's two fleets, an American and a Japanese fleet, both with carriers, and they s slowly converge on a certain point. So of course the objective is destroy the AI fleets, there are ground points to capture, there are airfield to capture, if you capture an airfield, air waves spawn in, which is really interesting, really cool mechanic that you don't see in the normal game modes. Um, the ships also are usually blocked by islands, so they don't engage in direct combat all that often. Hello there, boy, and welcome. Ooh, a Miyoko. And... That's actually a surprising amount of seemingly normal people in a match. Although I did made a grave mistake of spawning as soon as I could again. Okay. 
Yeah. Um, also, that's the other thing. The event, for the time being at least, does not allow player battleships. It's gonna, it's gonna be, it should be a very fun event to do again tonight. I had a lot of fun of it. I think the last test was Saturday or Sunday. Is that an Atlanta? That is an Atlanta. Okay. Yeah, that is a ask right away, boy, and if you have a question, and I'll try my best to answer it. What is that thing shooting me? Is that an HMS Tiger? I'll be damned, I think it is. And most of the stories just full, bring full ammo. You sh it's not going to reduce your risk of explosions by taking less ammo in destroyers. It's only on mo some of the newer ship models um, that, like, taking as less ammo has any effect, but even then it's a bit mixed. So especially in, in destroyers, just take full ammo. I'm going to use this guy's smokescreen to help myself hide as well. And it seems to might be working, maybe, hopefully. I think the guy has lost his lock. Frank Knox. Bit low, I think. We'll just keep shelling him. That is what I'm here for, to try and help out people who don't know what to do with naval. Also curious, what's, what nation are you playing if you're playing uh, Lothar Blue Water? Because I might help you along with that as well, if you're curious about what, what to play with what, with what nation. In general, just if you have any questions, be sure to ask, there's no stupid question. Let Frank Knox has speeched himself. Which of course throws off my aim. It's Soviet, so that's a, good, that's a good three to start with. It's a bit beginner and friendly, I'd want to say, but it's it's not a bad tech tree at all. My connection is doing funny business. I don't like it doing funny business. Okay, now hopefully my connection has stabilized a bit. I was saying that the Russians was a good tech tree to start with. Maybe not the 
best if you not if you don't really know what you're doing, but Russia is a solid tech tree. Good destroyers, good cruisers, good battleships, just good blue water tree. It depends on the bomber and depends on the torpedo. Although for the Russians, I can't imagine they have very many good torpedo bombers. If you're playing Russia, I have actually one bomber. A really re a recommendation of mine is the AR-2. Which does sound rather surprising, but it's a, I found it to be a really good bomber for naval, especially at destroyers. Just carry three 500s, and the AR-2 also carries air brakes, make, making it very easy to just go in fast, break if, you ne if necessary, and bomb those destroyers. 500 kilo bombs are also really good bombs against destroyers. Yeah, torpedo bombers are a bit more of a meme rather than an actual effective weapon. It depends on the torpedo in the nation, but I, I don't know what the Russian torpedo bombers would be. Not the top of my head, what is shooting me from over? Ah, it's the Atlanta lighting me up now. Lovely. Firing high explosive. That was my bridge. I think. No, I still have my bridge. Yeah, the IL-4 is also not the platform I would recommend for torpedo bombing. God. I'm being attacked from multiple angles. That Atlanta possibly being the worst of them. It's really all target target prioritization from the Lenta. Shooting a Kuma rather than the thing capturing Charlie. 200 kilogram payload is quite low. The speed isn't really all that important with torpedo bombers because it's depending on how close you drop of course. Because the torpedo for the initial few hundred meters will carry most of the aircraft speed as well. And 60 kph is definitely on the slow end, but it's not horrible. And range... I don't really look at the range for airdrop torpedoes too much, since I never drop ma at maximum range. That is an HMS Tiger. Or our 5.7s. Or Miyoko is a 5.7. I do not know why the Atlanta is so focused on me. I guess he thinks I'm an easy target. I should be going behind that island actually, but I've lost my bridge now, so I can't do anything. If you aren't you in torpedo, you aren't, are you? No. Because Akuma doesn't have good torpedoes. If I was an Isandai, I would have had a range to torpedo him. Not that it would have mattered since he's going full forward anyways. Since I can't go behind that island anymore. And I've lost my bridge again. Let's just go straight. That island isn't tall enough to cover me though from the Atlanta. And I didn't have the firepower to deal with the Atlanta. That's a 5-3 cruiser by the way. That thing. It really should not be 5-3. It shocks me that it's still 5-3. slow down because that'll throw off his aim a bit, if only a little. Yeah, you can see the island is no cover for us for the Atlanta, other than maybe breaking the lock of him. Maybe. I'm going to start repairing my guns. Yep, he's switched targets.
Let's see what I can do against that Frank Knox. Amorax can be rather fickle to hit. And there's also a difference between Radirax and actual Amorax. Yeah. Uh, in general, I don't recommend going for Amorax on destroyers, though, unless it's a destroyer with a really weak Amorax. I generally recommend going for engines, because that they drain a lot of crew. HE versus VT. Mm. In general, you should be bringing SAP for the main armament against destroyers. Then a VT and normal HE is genuinely replaceable with one another. Although VT technically does less damage, I think, against surface vessels. But what I usually do is just take like two thirds to three quarters SAP and the rest VT. I'm gonna pick a fight with the tiger and it's probably going to be the end of me. There goes the turret. I didn't notice what killer guy over there. Diana, okay. But that's game. Why, thank you. I didn't really wasn't really able to showcase the 140s too much, because they're really not good guns anymore. Mm, but we'll save that for later. Next up we'll do the Umahas. Or maybe, because we have somebody starting out with Russia, let's do Russia first. With their Kafkas. Yeah, we'll do that first. Hello there, RB. Yeah, there is not many of us, that's why I started doing it, really. Just have one more person out there that actually knows what they're doing. What on earth is this ammo load at? Mm. Let me look. Sap is definitely looking juicy, but that's a very... that's the same fuse. The Moskva is a bit of a weird ship. It's very fast, as you can see, 80 kph. But the turrets are a bit... Wonky. And uh, let me just see what I might need to bring. I think that's actually a pretty decent loadout. No torpedoes. No torpedoes. Корабль к бою и походу приготовить. Самый полный. Право на борт. Should you spade Moskva? If I go by my own rating system, it's a definite. Maybe. Or consider it. Although I haven't played a Moscow in quite a while. I haven't played the Russian destroyers in general in quite a while. Other than Spokonia and maybe Tashkent. That's a York? Okay. I've seen quite a few actual player destroyers around nowadays. That's good. 
Okay, most of our team spawned over there. That Commandante will not survive for too long, I think. Um, oh, that's 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 an interesting. We pitch you on speed. I don't exactly know what you mean with that. But speed is straightforward. Um, your, in terms of aircraft, should be just be left and right, like just steering, like this. I think pitch is going up and down. So if you're in heavy waves, that your bow goes up and down. When it comes to ships. Enemy destroyers. I'm gonna stay here behind this island discover. Load the sap because that is more efficient against destroyers than AP is. Wait for my ship to get all lined up. Those are going to miss two for forward, I think. Yep. No, one of them hit. I forgot about the long reload in the ship. Ah, the modification prioritization is definitely... I always prioritize whatever shell is best for me, especially if you have stock HE. On destroyers it doesn't matter too much. With cruisers upwards you definitely want to get SAP or AP first. Because getting that allows you to earn our um, research points more efficiently. Then of course parts and FP. And then it depends on the ship. I like to prioritize the modifications that nullify weaknesses. Like let's say your ship is kind of slow, I go for speed modifications. The third rotates slowly, third rotation modifications first. Mm. What other modifications? Survivability modifications aren't really all that noticeable, in my opinion, except for maybe pumps. If you're in a ship that tends to suffer from flooding quite often, you might want to do new pumps soon as well. Other than that... Yeah, just that really, if, if, if your ship feels too slow to you, go for speed modifications. If the turrets turn too slow, turret modifications. And that's about it. I genuinely... If I don't have a particular weakness to fill up, I um, like to go for the speed modifications first anyways. Because that allows you to get to capture points quicker, allows you to get into better positions quicker, allows you to get out of bad positions quicker. Slow on a destroyer is definitely anything below 60 kph. I would say 60 kph is like the minimum you want for a destroyer. Anything below it I, I would consider slow. I think around 70 kph is like 70 to 65 is around average for a destroyer. Anything above 70 is good is good speed. I mean 70 is also pretty good. But yeah. There goes one. In general, I don't really like this kind of camping playstyle too much. But on a ship with a very slow reload, that's something you just have to do sometimes. There's quite a few ships like this one where you have poor reload but really devastating guns. 
And that's when you just want to make sure that you can shoot at, at threats one at a time. Yeah, um, the the brave class is very underwhelming, but it is the best they get really. And two forty mils isn't necessarily the worst, but it is. Yeah. yeah, shooting the guns always works as well. I, again, I don't like doing this gun, but I reload every eighteen seconds against ships that reload every six. Which is, I don't, I just don't want to push out into bad spots, but now that I no longer have any targets, we push up. The other reason why I also allow myself to just sit in a position like this is that there are no enemies with capture points. They're starting to cap now, but I'm already on the move, so it doesn't matter. Quite a few more enemy destroyers. And we will open fire on them. There is also an enemy cruiser around to my left. Enemy, whatever it was. Yeah, the L7. The one thing I will say about the L70 Bofors, so they are a good gun, but the lack of armor piercing shells are really painful at times. That is a Kurt, we do not really want to deal with him. We have a friendly capturing Bravo, perfect. Yeah, L70 Bofors do not get armor piercing shells. They only have high explosive and high explosive variable time fuse. There's quite a few player ships on the, on both teams. Quite surprising. I have to be a bit more patient with my gunnery because I can't really allow to miss all that much with an 18 second reload. On the 76, um, for the Russian destroyers, PT. That's just your secondary gun. A 76 is not going to do anything against most other destroyers. It's also most likely not going to be under your direct control. I mean, a 76mm AP shell will do damage to destroyers, but just, just use it at your long range AA if you have an anti air shell for it. Like, even if you don't have an anti air shell for it, you can still just have HE on it and fire, let it fire the aircraft. Every now and then it'll hit. I'm kind of. Per very stuck in the camp of I don't use secondaries for anything other than anti-air. With some exceptions. Like, theoretically, I should be using the secondaries on the ships against Destroyer as well. The 100mm guns of HG. But I just don't need... I don't want to. The main reason you don't often see me use, manually using my secondaries is because I usually use my time when I'm reloading to look around me. To look what's going on, like there's an enemy destroyer there. I've failed to hit the Jugumo several times now. Like, not using the secondaries allows me to just not tunnel vision. And I know that, especially on this cruiser, the 100 mils would actually be very effective against other ships. Well, very quite effective. So I really should be using them, but it's just not a habit of mine. British destroyer, meaning they have a very vulnerable frontal ammo rack, but I am not yet loaded. Let me see. Even if I wanted to use my second years now, they're loaded with anti air shells. Yeah, that's what I mean. Playing arcade. 
quite a different beast, but for shell types it should still be the same. If anything, I think NTR is a bit more important in Arcade Eve. Although, one, one thing you have to remember, especially for playing Arcade, anti-air gunner AI, so if they're just controlled by the computer, will only sh accurately shoot at targets out to 5 kilometers. So especially since you're playing Russia, you'll probably have a P8 somewhere in your future. If you fly above an altitude of five kilometers, AI gunners will never hit you. Like they just physically cannot hit you. I am missing my shots against the Jervis Zamorak, and it's hurting me. That's not the Jervis, ask him. And I see my friendly just sailed past Charlie, so I'll capture it myself. Again, you, you can dodge NTR pretty easily at whatever altitude you fly at, as long as your aircraft is capable of it. But I'm just saying, outside of 5 kilometers, and no matter what the NTR suite is of a ship, it'll never hit you outside of 5 kilometers. Unless it's player controlled and they know how to aim at that kind of range. I am not going to survive this, I can already tell. Nope, both game modes. In both game modes, AI gunners will never hit a target outside of 5 kilometers. Never. It's just a lot more difficult to tell what range you are from a target in realistic battles. And the air is opening up at stuff. I better start repairing some of the guns. There's a target in front of me. Well, the lucky thing about Fritz X is that that bomb doesn't really come on many... Although, I don't know what the Grife is like, the 177. Key 43 is a weird plane to try and attack a cruiser with. I guess to each their own. But the thing is, Fritz X is quite... It's difficult to climb up to the altitude, I think, in those planes, of course. I'm talking about realistic battles in my experience. It's for arcade, I don't know how quickly you can climb. Uh, against destroyers, really big rockets can work. Smaller ones will mostly just annoy a destroyer captain. Yes, the Moskva. The other torpedoes, good. So the thing the Moscow has going for it is its insane speed in a straight line. The guns are a bit slow to rotate though. 4 kilograms of TNT. I mean, that'll destroy the superstructure and the exposed components of a destroyer, 4 kilograms of TNT. It's like a roundabout. What is the high explosive on this this shell? It's double that of a 130 millimeter shell. So basically, two of these shells is one of your rockets. It's not going to sink a destroyer, but it's definitely going to knock out turrets and all the other stuff in the superstructure. I 
I'm also not in the best of matches to showcase the mosque for now, but I will. Yeah, it goes fast. The middle gun does have a bit of a restrictive firing arc towards the front. But you can just show your side a bit. Until it gets resolved. Come on, there we go. Now where was that Japanese destroyer? Don't see it anymore. Careful that I don't run into an island. If you have to take a torpedo, try and take it on the tip of your bow. Um, the place where you don't want to take it is right next to your ammo rack, because that'll just detonate you. If you cannot avoid the torpedo at all, try to take it either on the bow. Even the engines themselves are usually fine, although that risks heavy flooding. And of course immobilizing you. Just try and avoid torpedoes hitting next to your ammo racks. Should be your main goal. Of course, if your ship has a very long bow, it helps as well. Which the Moskva in this case doesn't really. Yeah, just dead on the bow if you can. Dead, just dead on the tip of your ship. Where did that Japanese destroyer go? Machine назад. Rotate the turrets, which is going to be quite some time. The pretty tubes have a decent reverse rate. Yeah, the turrets are very slow to turn. Ah, leather comes in. The enemies not have any destroyers left I can shoot. Oh, there are some over there. So I'm going to try and stay out of line of sight from that Kurch, because that's a really dangerous cruiser. And we're going to shoot at these destroyers. Yeah, the the rough ocean state in coastal is really annoying because it didn't used to always be like that. Check to see if nothing is coming from over there. Still shooting a bit too high. He's turning. What am I shooting at? That's why it's sometimes useful to have your gunners on both air and surface targets. Please come around that scalp, come around it. There we go. Stop machine. Yep. It is a really it's a really weird weird destroyer that the uh, what was, what's it called again? It's not the best Poschatny, it's the... Oh, some other weird Russian name, I guess. Can't remember it. It's not that long of a name, but I just can't remember it. Off the top of my head. It's also the weird thing, those are Swedish guns, I believe. 
They're like both for 120 mils. That Harukaze is shooting me, I think. So I need to be very careful. I'll be able to see what the word is after this match anyways. Ooh, that's... Harukaze is really low on HP. A good engine hit or two should put it down. Also pretty fast in reverse, the Moscow apparently. That's good. There we go, one more hit. To do the job. There we go. How long have I been playing naval? Ever since it came into close testing. I was not there for the entire CBT of naval. But I was there for when they tested, first tested light cruisers. That's when I started playing naval. So quite some time. What are my secondaries shooting at? Aha. Uh -huh. Vessel. There it is. Oh, there's two of them. Okay. The Harakaze and the... There we go. That's a good hit. Quite surprised I actually broke him with that. I mean, you have to start at some point, don't you? Yep. Yeah, there is definitely, when it comes to naval and you don't know anything about it, it's a learning curve. Even coming from other naval games is not that easy to get into it. This is actually a pretty good match. Quite a few actual players on each team. The most important thing to just get the hang of is definitely the gunnery when it comes to blue water ships, even coastal ships. But after that you can just learn on uh, learn whatever else. Okay, so that was the Russians. Now we go to the Americans, I say. Still have more than an hour before the event starts. So we'll definitely be able, I think, to go through all the lineups. Yep, let's just go into it. Also, if you notice for at some point that the stream just stutters for a few seconds on end, my connection tends to be a bit unstable at times, losing to a lot of lost to a lot of lost frames. Oh, this is not really a fun map for cruisers because your forces spawn down there, and the Omaha isn't exactly the fastest. Third, it should be fine. Um, in an hour or so, Wiggling Dragon, a streamer that mainly does air sim and other stuff, 
but mainly Air Sim for War Thunder is hosting an event, which is a mix of both Air Sim and Naval in the Pacific Theater, and it looks quite it's quite fun. I've participated in a few tests of it. It just so happened that that the third test that I can participate in is on the say, same day that I'm streaming. Being lit up by the Moffat, but it should stop pretty soon, as they're behind an island. I say hopefully, but I kind of doubt it. Alpha, so this is a 5-7 match, that's not good. I think you can. Excuse me, is it a hipper? It is a hipper. Okay, thank god for a second, I thought it was a Scharnhorst. Um... I'm going to have to see, like, the thing is there are vehicle restrictions and I don't quite, actually no, I, I do know how I can share the list of you. When it goes live, I'll see how many people are still up, I'll see how I can share it around. Have to look at, I'll have to look at my Discord what the actual passwords for stuff like that is. For the um, mission. There's a thing, it's, it's an event, but it's actually the test of an event. So a lot of stuff of it isn't quite fine-tuned yet. How on earth am I going to deal with a Eugen slash Hipper? Mm. Well, the best thing I can do is just hope it doesn't hit me. Also, let's just launch a plane. And what we are going to do is we're going to turn away. I see my Kingfisher already just stalling out. Yeah, that's the thing, it's it's like the event is in an hour. It is quite late. Um I'm just gonna keep climbing so I can ditch these bombs. Actually I can just ditch these bombs without an explosion hazard. There we go. Again we have an HMS Liverpool. I'm going to slow the ship so I don't go outside of the map. And I'm going to go capture Charlie first. Yes, on their Kirov claws, I think. They have scout planes. Yeah, it's, it's the Kudov class cruisers have the scout planes on them. And I think the Crunch that also has a scout plane, but I could be could be wrong with that. They don't have very many, at least. It's not good to be an anti-air range of all those destroyers. But I still have another scout plane if I lose this one. That's a lot of destroyers. Ooh boy. I think that's VT being slung at me. Ah, that's... Yep. That was VT. Not in quite severely, but that's fine. We can repair it. Control to party. Uh, that one hurt a bit more. And what I'm going to do now, because I do want to keep angled in, but I want to also go to the battlefield, if I just go nose in. I'm going to repair to just. Get my speed up a bit. 
As destroyed funnels do affect your speed. And let's deal with some of these destroyers. Yes, a destroyed smoke funnel will impact your speed. Quite severely. I don't know how much. But quite severely. You'll notice it. I'm flooding severely because I think one of my magazines just blew up. And I'm going to go purely nose in because the Omahas are actually really good at going nose in while still having six guns on target. Practically six guns on target. Yeah, that Oma, that Moffat over there is being a right thing. And so is, of course, that Eugen. I should just go for a crew kill on that Moffat and not go for the Amorax. But yeah. I don't know what the exact percentage is of um, speed loss when you lose this funnel, but it is noticeable. That fire is bad, so I'm going to stop the repairs. There we go, that's one less. I mean, it is possible. Although you must have been really lucky to do that. Getting like the last hit on a turret or something like that. That's a torpedo in the water. You see the torpedo just skimming along the surface. Getting shot by that by the cruise is really annoying. I also lost my bridge, so I can't steer, but that's fine. I want to stay bowing anyways. I don't think you can shoot a torpedo in the water. You can blow them up with other bombs, though. That's something you can do. Though you rarely see anybody do it. That destroyer should be going down. Yes, he is. I've lost the rangefinders, uh, not really. They might just be inaccurate though. Lost a few more guns, but they're none of the guns I'm using, so I don't really care too much. Now I've lost my rangefinders, I think. Ah, um, you cannot shoot torpedoes, you can bomb them though. I mean... To a certain extent you can damage destroyers with 30 mils, but it's, you're not going to sink any. The anti-air of a destroyer is most certainly going to shoot you out of the sky way before you can sink it with 30 mils. I am done for. I do want to shoot this destroyer though for being arrogant enough to just shoot at a light cruiser. But I'm missing behind him. I'm still afloat, so if I just don't repair and preserve the crew a bit. Hold on, flooding. There we go, I'm on him. I'm gonna start to deep flooding because I am flooding quite severely. I can't slow my speed because my bridge has been lost. That's another thing. If you're flooding very rapidly, slow down. Your ship speed affects how fast you flood. That fire could have couldn't have been at a worse time. I have, however, regained my bridge. Yep. 
Those shells hit nothing apparently. I lost my bridge again. And because of the loss of my rangefinder, I don't actually know the range of this target too well. There we go. And now I'm going down. I think the Liverpool will finish me off. That was a good run. Although not really to my own preferences, but that was good enough. I do have a backup, but I'm not going to use it on a Trenton. Let's just spawn another one. Level bombing with an F8? I mean, you can certainly try, but I think without a bomb site, that's going to be quite difficult, isn't it? Dive bombing you could do with an F8. Destroy over there, I think. But I do not really have a line of sight. And I kind of want to deal with these cruisers. Yeah, we got the shot. That's good. Throw it at me. Go ahead. I do not know, boy, and I do not know the answer to that. Oh, well, I do not know the joke answer, at least. Uh, I think I've heard one before, but yes, that is a... That is indeed a pirate joke. Is it a sp No, boy, craft spear. But actually, was it was it a hipper that got sunk, and not a? It was. So that's a player. Okay. I thought it would have been a Eugen. We have a very good position on the map already. That Liverpool is also very low on crew. Well, if it's a British or an American ship, that's... Actually, no, you're not American, are you? Hmm. Also, I completely forgot to look at that Swedish, weird Russian ship. Oh well. Doesn't matter too much. This match is definitely a victory for us. And there we go.
multiple things. Let me just check when that event is again. Okay. Yes. Well, not a ship, but boats do have a PDS. Mainly... And I'm going to check the name of the ship as well, thank you for reminding me. PJ2 has a PDS. Then again, it is literally a boat with a Vulcan cannon on it. With a minigun. And that Russian ship with the mirrored name was the Letucci, that's right. Actually, do any other coastal vessels have APDS with them? Uh, I don't think do the Russian, does the Russian one have it? The 206? I just, I don't even have AP, okay. Cyclone, that's right, Cyclone also has APDS. This boat. APDS. Isn't it also because it's the same gun as a Bradley, I think? 25... I don't know. Yeah, the Cyclone also has APDS. So we've done Japan, Ger uh, Russia and America, so we have Germany and Britain still. Oh, these are not 5-0 ships in realistic, okay. Does Britain have any other 5-0s? No, okay then. So these need to be replaced. And I guess Britain will be up next. Also, why is this crew not experted? There we go. I like this map because Especially on this side, you can just go right here and into BNC without anything stop stopping you. I need to take full ammo because why not? Another my torpedoes. I probably have never unequipped a torpedo modification this thing. Well, secure the ship for sea. Um, is that thirty-two? I don't actually like that that destroyer too much. The one of the fifteen centimeter guns. Because I like playing destroyers of high rate of fire guns, and the Z-32 is not that. Furutaka, so it's a 5-7 match again. We have friendly coastal as well, going to capture Bravo and Charlie. So instead of going to Bravo and Charlie myself, I might actually sneak up here to try and cover Alpha. But I'll see. And I have absolutely no problems with answering any questions. So if you manage to catch me live again, be sure to answer me any question you like. And I'll see you later. Damage control to repair parties. Pump out flooded compartments. Repair parties. I'm going to repair that single gun. Because I'm not under constant fire. Is an enemy coastal vessel around? Direct hit. Destroyer ahead. Four thousand meters. Damage 
We didn't say destroyer ahead, 4,000 meters. Or do I misremember what I just heard? the vessel needs to be dealt with at some point. There we go. Um. Okay, the boat's outside of rendering range, apparently. Which, very annoyingly, there is one for boats. It is very possible for boats to just be outside of random range for blue water ships. That is an inaccurate lead because he was turning. Can I maintain lock? With a bit of luck, this will hit. With a bit of luck. No luck. Well, lucky for me, that coastal vessel doesn't carry any torpedoes, so I'm not afraid to just go into the shallows with it. It does carry some pretty big rockets, but it just got sunk, so that's fine then. Our other player cruiser is also heading this way, which I don't really like too much. Especially, well, both of them really should be more than fine by sitting next to A, instead of going to the sea area. My gun is shooting at narrow targets, that's good to know. Enterprise is actually decently armed against aircraft, with a lot of 20 mils aboard. Although the long range armament could be a bit better, I guess. I think that's under Kirch. Yes, tried, but that's that's also a question I asked quite a bit ago. Already showed him. Yeah, for as far as I know, it's the Gatling gun on the PG-2 and the 25mm on the Cyclone to carry APDS and nothing else. I am going to let my other player cruisers ahead, but I am going to mark the enemy light cruiser again. Especially the Furutaka should be shooting at that cruiser. On I've also clearly shot through the ready rack of my front gun turret. Which is a bit annoying. Other cruisers are shooting, yep. Their Athus is at least shooting the courage now. Yep, he just switched targets to that thing. I definitely did not steal that kill. I do not know what you're talking about, officer. I 
am going to maneuver to try and get onto Alpha. For that, I need to reverse. And just stop firing for a second to allow my ready rack to replenish. Enemy Spokoini. Actually, actually, there should be a black or not, should not. Real fancy cam on it. That's gonna be overshooting him. A destroyer, a boat, and a plane. And Germany has a really a lot of good coastals. Um, let me actually, after this match, rem I'll remind that I'll remember that question after this match, and I'll look at the tech tree because I'd like to see the entire tech tree for that. Five oh dot plane would it take though? Oh, that's a good detonation. The destroyer is pretty easy. I would take the um, the last ship that has the five, the five inch guns. Although the German 128s tend to not do well against armor because they only have base use high explosive. So at 5 you should probably take the either Z25, the old battle pass vehicle, or the Tech 3 Z32, I think. So either of those two. When it comes to boats, there's a there's a lot of options for Germany. Ideally, probably the PR206. Ideally, although the Huygen, the Jaguar, the um, the File, those boats all would do just as well. But they're all high tier boats, is the thing. Um, there aren't all. At 5 you don't really want to take too many low tiers. The V990 is kind of fun. But I think its guns kind of get outperformed at 5-0. Make sure to take it as a coastal. When it comes to planes though, I don't really have an idea. Although if the, if the FW190 F8 is below it, below 5-0, you should probably take that. If you want a fast dive bomber. For, for aircraft, I generally prefer anything that's quick with a really big bomb. Is it, oh boy, no, it's a cruiser shooting me, isn't it? This guy. That is way too far behind. No, it's actually it's just that guy shooting me now, isn't it? I do wonder where my friendly cruisers are. There's one. And it's kind of blocking my shot, I think. Actually, not most of it. There we go. I've lost my bridge. And most of my guns. I think it's time to repair. Even if that might mean the end of me. There we go. 
Can I regain my bridge at any point? There we go. The Enterprise has no right going this ham. I should stop my repairs, really. Because they're not really necessary anymore. Let's just stop the flooding. I am still repairing for some reason. Kalisus is fine, and there we go. Not enough free crew. The open gun turrets on the Enterprise are quite a weakness for it, though. You lose all your firepower really quick. Can I get the cap before I fully sink? Can I get the cap? Can I? Yes. Mm, what we spawn in now? Exactly, stop being bad. Um, Kitties will be fine. This is a 5 7 match as well, by the way. Getting shot at by an American heavy cruiser and a Kirch. under aim by quite a bit because I'm just going straight at him. Although I under aimed a bit too much there. He's been taken up a Leander and that's the end of it. No enemy in sight. go that was a good match okay 20 more minutes until the event starts that should be enough for one more match at the very least so let's actually to come back to the question about german lineup at 5-0 so obviously emden then z32 or z25 in my opinion because whilst i really like this gun the um german 128 it struggles against armor so, either of those two, for a boat, basically anything rank 5 is fine, in my opinion. Maybe like a V990, but anything rank 5 should do. Although the Köln, of course, gets a destroyer spawn, so let's just forget that. And for aircraft... I don't know my R aircraft nearly well enough. F8 is not 5-0, so you can't use that. I, do I don't know these bombers well enough to know how, how quick they go. Do they, do they have big bombs? They do. It's like maybe a Dornier 217? Yeah, something like that. So now, actually playing the Emden again. Oh no, I forgot the switch is too realistic. Oh well, a rare arcade match it is, I guess. Mm, we spawn there, that's quick on spawns. 
It's, an, it's a full up there as well, again, isn't it? Nuremberg is 5 7, so is Norfolk. Yep. Yeah. That's going to be rough. Mm, why the AP over Sap? Sap has three times the filler, but way less span. I'm going to change it up a bit because I think Sap should be better against destroyers. Yeah, for some reason, every time you make a new lineup, it defaults to arcade. And I forgot to switch it to realistic. But oh well, playing arcade every now and then isn't too bad. need my secondaries to fire upon destroyers because they're low caliber secondaries. The bridge getting knocked out on that guy is pretty good. I have to be really careful of, of torpedoes now that I see that Japanese destroyer going broadside. Because torpedoes and arcade are way faster. What are those heavy cruisers? Portland's okay then. Let's not get focus fired by Portland's. That would be great. I guess Yakizuki is our only viable target, or maybe this. What is that? German destroyer? Let's shoot and find out. A fun fact about the Amden, if you can call it as a fun fact, is that it used to be the tankiest ship in game when the light cruiser first came out. It was the best 5.0 light cruiser. That is a British destroyer. That is not having a good day. Also, what did the Emden have back in the day for competition? Jesus. I'm not used to having a torpedo warning for torpedoes you can actually dodge. I guess that's one bonus for arcade as well. Ah, uh, that might be why the F8 wasn't 5 0 in my. Um, when I looked at the text readers for arcade. Actually, those, those kind of like fast dive bombers work better in arcade because you have a bomb site with them. I know, back in the day, 5 0, Amden was the tankiest, um, tankiest light cruiser. Nowadays, it is pretty easy to Amarak. If you know where the Amarak is. I need to fire HE, not AP. Come on. That's way too much lead, maybe? Not. Yeah. But again, I was just saying that back in the day. When, it was, was, when the 5 0 was like top tier for naval, Amden was one of the tankiest cruisers. And again, I don't think I had much competition. 
Okay, that's a low shot. Is he going to try and attack me? I think he is. The two aircrafts coming my way though are not quite... Uh, are quite scary. So I'm going to turn to let my um, anti-air have it. Have it. Torpedo warning from the PTA-10, but that's fine. Although, funnily enough, I didn't see the PTA-10 launch bomb those torpedoes. Come on, anti-air gunners, do your job. Do your job. He's not going for me, he's going for the Leopard. Where's the F-8? There's the F-8. Keep turning. Turn left after I pass this wreck. He's not going for me. Oh, hello there, PT-565. This torpedo should be pretty easy to dodge. The thing is, they forced me to maneuver quite... ...aggressively. What I wanted to do with his bombs might have been more torpedoes from my head, but I should be dodging them. And there I got a mine got dropped in front of me. Okay, didn't expect that. I do have a backup, and I am going to use it. Although I get a slight feeling we are not going to win this match. I don't need my secondaries to fire at ships anymore. Just put them into ship duties because of that coastal vessel. I need to be careful about it because I think I saw an Akazuki still on the prowl. And that thing's torpedoes. Will be, yep, there it is. That thing's torpedoes will be very dangerous. Speaking of... Oh no. I can still dodge it if I don't drift into it. We are fine. But I almost drifted into it. What do I shoot at? Probably a destroyer, really. Although what is that heavy cruiser? It is a Norfolk, okay. But this match is about to be over anyways. Yeah, Naval Arcade is definitely a lot more action-packed. Uh... Okay. That Nuremberg just got a one-shot. I'm 
I was about to say, I haven't seen an Akizuki fire all this much this match, but now it's opening fire upon a teammate of mine. And there we go, game over. Not the worst our foray into arcade went. Didn't go too bad. Now, it is 10 minutes until that event. And I've heard that the lobby word is already open. So I think, yeah, what I'm going to do, and I'm sorry for the Italian mains watching, I'm going to not do the Italy 5 0 up now, and I'm going to prepare for this event. Alrighty. So for this event, I'm running this lineup for myself. And now how I'm going to show people how to do it. Just setting everything up. Okay. So, what this event entails is, again, it's a simulator event with aircraft and ships. A simulator for ships doesn't really mean anything other than you're permanently zoomed in. For aircraft, of course, it means full simulator controls. Let me just double check if it's already open. There we go. I think the password should just be dragon all lowercase. It is. And then I'm just going to go through the list. So there's a whole list of ships you can bring. It, you can't bring every ship. Um, but they made this le neat little graphic on what is recommended. Let me just bring it up. In the meantime, let me actually just look at the full list that is up to date of vehicles. Whoops. I should really have prepared this beforehand, but oh well. Just a moment. Five more minutes until I can just get these lists of vehicles. I assume most of you just are interested in the ship lineup, so that's the ones I'm going to be posting. If you want more information on this event, and if you want to follow up its, its development, it's, well, yeah, its development, Wingling Dragon is a content creator I highly recommend if you're vaguely interested in air sim stuff. And he has a decent group of people that are interested in naval as well. But it's also, it's his server where all this stuff about this event is being developed. Let me just 
save all this stuff in the appropriate folder. Okay. So, for the event, there's a neat little graphic somebody made for recommended vehicles. Let me just find a way to switch over to that again. So, these are the recommended vehicles for the upcoming event. There are spawn point costs associated to higher tier vehicles. And these are just the recommended so you start off with the i the Americans with the Alwyn. You go up to just bigger ships. With the full list of vehicles being for ships. This for the Japanese. So the T-14 Coastal Vessel. Chidori, Mutsuki, Fubuki, Satsuki, Yugumo. The Nohi and Hayanami and Hatsuharu. Even Akizuki. I'm not sure if that's an update, up-to-date list actually. But yeah. Those are like those are the ship classes. Not actually just the ships themselves, with their associated spawn point cost. And for the Americans, it's this list. I think that's the up-to-date one. But anyways. The event should be starting soon. And that's just a black screen. There we go. I'll just ready up. Did I ready up? I did. And now we just wait for it to start, which should be in two more minutes. And if you wanted to join this, if you have a, if you have a lineup like mine ready, if you want to do Americans or Japanese, go into the custom battle list, filter it to simulator battles, then it will be really easy to find. Look for the one hosted by Wingling Dragon. And the password to this event is just dragon all lowercase. And I'm going to put that in the chat as well, just so people can follow. One second. There we go. Any moment now it should be starting. now. 
there's no, there's of course the intention that at some point when this event actually goes um live yeah but remember that their stuff is higher spawn point costs and again it is not that important you you'll see later on what, what actually happens during the during the event like there is of course currently because we don't have full capacity and we definitely hope that when the actual event goes live we will be at full capacity like there's currently more ai ships and way more ai planes than actual players and yeah we are aware that the helen is a baltimore well the baltimore does stack up pretty well to the tony we are, we're aware that the Helena slash Brooklyn is really powerful. Yeah, for some reason, sometimes when you join this event, you aren't automatically assigned the correct team. Then you have to go into referee mode to change your team. But this should be pretty fun. Well, at least last time we tested this event, which was last Saturday, it was pretty stable. Like, next to no... Although my game did actually crash the last time I did this. So let's hope it doesn't happen this time. I think they're still getting people in. You know what I should do? I should get the link to the channel of Wingling Dragon and another person who's really... This is not the first of this kind. They've been testing this event for quite a bit. Um, they've been... Wingling Dragon has been making this event from scratch pretty much. Like doing all the balancing, adding all the AI planes. So they're just stress testing it basically to see what happens with all these ships, what happens with all the planes, are the objectives balanced, that kind of stuff. So it's not, I don't think it's the full on event yet, but we are running up in numbers. That's good to see. But yeah, like Crab Nation and Wingling Dragon are both very nice content creators for air sim stuff. And especially Crab Nation, he hosts events, like air sim events every weekend. And they, they're usually pretty fun. Of course, if you're a fan of Arsim, that is. Let me try and bring that list of vehicles up again, whilst we're waiting in the lobby. Because if people are watching this stream and are possibly interested in joining, you should definitely try it. I'm just going to put that there. I'm put that one there. Let me just. Okay. And I'm going to switch over to the media share stuff again. Yep. And hopefully, not do that. So if you see these two lists, these are the lists of the allowed ships. So if you, if you want to, if you have like a lineup of the ships, also the numbers after the ships is your spawn point cost value. And I'm going to say getting like above 50 spawn points can be quite difficult. So just look, do you have any of the destroyers that could be fun? And if you're thinking of, well, this may, might look interesting, I don't know what this is. See if you can join. The 
these are the these are the ship lists. And again, the um, entire procedure for joining. Pardon me. The entire procedure for joining this event is should be still visible in the YouTube chat. That if that's not visible, I'm just going to re repeat it anyways. You go to the custom battles. You filter by sim battles or sim difficulty. Look for the one hosted by Wingling Dragon. And the password for the event is just Dragon, all lowercase. And these are the allowed ship lists. And when I see that the battle actually starts, I'll just put it back to the normal streaming window. Yeah, I mean, if, if you're available to just watch, that's fine as well. Because I do actually want to get the word out about this event because it was really fun the last time I tried it. It's, it's like a... Yeah, it's just a fun... Even though it isn't really naval oriented, it, it has enough stuff for the naval players to really have fun with it. Especially if you're a fan of trying to do anti-air stuff. Also, I will add though, I'm not entirely sure if these lists are up to date. The vehicle should still be allowed, but the, by the looks of it, their spawn point costs are reworked. So the, the vehicle list should be co correct still. That's not a thing. For some reason, custom maps, um, not not. If you join a custom battle on a naval map, boat planes work, scout planes work fine, but any other custom map with ship spawns in it, float planes do not work. At, do do not work at all. Although I don't really see much point in getting. Well, you can capture some points with the float planes, I guess, but other than that, there's not much point. I think they're just going over the final brief in their own voice chat. I think the next time I see this event going um, live, I'll, I'll make a YouTube post about it as well. Try and inform people. Although I do think they want more pilots than um, the captains. Also, this event might be a really good excuse for me to actually do some sim on stream, some air sim. It should start any moment now. It should start any moment now. Just gonna double check in the Discord and see if it's. Any movement in there because I think um, what they did is the the starting time should have been 10 minutes ago but I am not going to join a VC because I don't have the sound set up for it for with the stream so yeah I think they're just going over final final briefings of what's this event supposed to be and stuff like that any other questions before they really start. Because w Wingling is being very thorough about the testing of this event and answering questions about it. The things I think you still can join even if it's started because the spawn points move up with the AI fleet. Did the host live? Oh, like, uh, do you mean Wingling stream? Sure, let me try and get it. Because whilst I might not listen to it, it might be a good idea if, if you want to try and listen to it. Let me just find it again. Um... I think... He's, he's streaming on Twitch though at the moment. I 
And let's see, do the links work in the YouTube chat? Let me just... To the... Oh, it's live. Yeah, hold on a sec. I think that works. Yes. You shouldn't... The event should last for quite some time. So you shouldn't be missing out too much. Again, I'm just keeping the ship lists up until the battle actually starts for people who might want to join. I should really do the plane lists as well, but I think that's not quite the audience I have here, is it? I'm just going to repeat again just to be sure that everybody understands. The numbers next to like the ship names are their spawn point costs during the event. And I would say like getting to 60, 70 spawn point costs can be a bit difficult already. So especially just look if you have vehicles in the zero stands twenties and not really further. Anything further is just if you have that many spawn points. But zero, ten and twenty is definitely ships are going to be spawning a lot. I do hope you're starting soon. You might be finalizing some touches to the mission. Yep, they're splitting up into their respective teams. Voice comms is probably going to start pretty soon. Yeah. Like, I, the thing is, I think I'm going to, if, if I can stream again for the next time they do this test event, I might actually jump into some aircraft because I do have a full flight sim setup. So it might be fun to do for a for once. We should be starting soon. And let me just put it back on streaming. There we go, we are starting. I really hope I don't crash this time. And I hope I actually got my lineup correct. That that ship list was actually correct. Okay, spectator mode. More Americans than Japanese, but that's fine. Okay, Akizuki is still free to spawn. That is perfect because I love the Akizuki Zui. There we go. You can see here the vehicle list again, unlimited. Also interesting to note is how many active ships per type can be can be used. Hmm. Okay, Akizuki spawn because that is. Look at the AI aircraft and AI fleet. The Americans all spawn on the other side of the island, so I'm going to try and get to that side quick. You can already see, I think, the dots. Was it? What did I see? Yeah, you can see some backs of an American 
It's the white group, I think, up in the distance. Uh, yeah, barely just there. I see some dots. There is an airfield for the planes to capture. They're of course using the new HD carrier models, which just look stunning. I mean, look at them. And we have AI planes flying over us. I think, are they? Yeah, they're B5Ns with torpedoes. Again, I want to get closer to the island to intercept the enemy attack wave. You can see aircraft over there. You can in third person, at least you can see dots. Let's try not to ram into the Takazuki. Yeah, you can fight, you can see them now. I'm not entirely sure if they're friendly or enemy. There are also ground objectives, but those are usually just airfields for the enemy to capture. Well, airfields for, for aircraft to capture. There we go, the first enemy aircraft spotted. I don't really want to fire it at the moment. We're still a bit too far out. Oh. Uh, yeah, a bit too far out. But we definitely have to be careful now. And those were friendly strike aircraft you see there. You see that? Yep. More enemy aircraft are cresting the mountain. I see a Catalina, but it's a bit too far out. But yeah, I want to be on that side of the fleet. I'm very much out of him. Here come the torpedo bombers. Almost. There's a lot of them coming in now. I'm not quite in position just yet. Look at them. It does tend to get a bit laggy every now and then. That's to be expected with that many anti-air shells. Because it is just for the um Yeah, three is just about right. Enemy torpedoes, I need to dodge. There we 
we go. More enemy aircraft incoming. Another torpedo goes into the water. And that one might actually hit our carrier. Oof, yes, somebody, one of them hit our Kazuki. And that was the first wave. We saw some aircraft above us. Yeah. Dive bombers. That torpedo will miss us. Okay, we're over there. Careful if there's families in the area, but I don't hit them as well. The somewhat annoying thing is that with the sheer amount of shells being thrown in the air, is that your tracers tend to disappear after a while. Got an aircraft destroyed, I didn't even know I was shooting at. That one probably. There's a friendly on his tail, so I need to be very careful. Very careful. Yup. The thing is, he will I did not hit him with his main guns. He got shot down by my secondary by my 25s. The SP U C yeah. Oh boy. That was a player. Did he drop a torpedo? I don't see any. What am I shooting at? Over there. Yeah, the lag is a bit worse than it was the last time we tested this. Then again, there's a lot more people now than the last time we tested it. Yeah, there's an enemy Alaska that spawns and that's right. Do we have a straggler? We have a Yugo mode straggling. 25 is all over. But as you can see, if it wasn't for the quite bad lag. Oh no. Oh no, that's not gonna end well. Oh no. Yeah, that's a big hole. Several big holes. Although they both hit the same spot, so that's not bad. 
the fire extinguishing at the same time is going to be pretty annoying though. I'm going to stop that. It put itself out already. How many spawn points have I earned already? Okay. Almost enough for Nagano. Also, that's not really the ideal ship to spawn in. Preferably, I'd get the Aoba. More torpedoes, but that one's far away. It should not hit me. Let's see if I can take that guy down. Shooting at a target going away with HTF is a bit hit or miss. Oh boy, that torpedo is going to hit that cruiser, isn't it? Yep. A Corsair. Peter threat from there, I can dodge it. If I turn left. Another torpedo heading my way, I think. I can only keep turning left that often. Nope. This aircraft just disappeared. Catalina up. See if we can do that. And shoot him then. He might be trying to bomb our carrier. And he's shot down by Kuma. Spawn points at now. Eh, still pretty low. Also, what's up with the enemy Alaska? Yeah, he's trying to get into our fleet. Let's swap to the HG torpedo warning from all the way back there. I'm not too worried. Yeah, these AI ships don't repair themselves, luckily. So the Alaska shouldn't be that big of a threat. So to Peter from the rear, but it's, yeah, it's never going to hit me. Mm. I hear the bomb whistle and I'm, that's very concerning. Okay, that was a crit. Oh boy, there's a lot of aircraft in that direction. I lost my main gun from somewhere. That's a torpedo I need to dodge. I really want to torpedo the Alaska, but the friendly carriers are in the way. Actually, armored torpedoes even at 4 meter depth, they are. I'm going to try and get behind this carrier. And then I should be able to torpedo the... Oh, 
Alaska. There's no other ships in my way? Nope. So we launch a spread. And I think they have the arcade speed modifier to them. Oh, he spawned on a very bad carrier. Repeater from the front. Where? Nope, to the rear. There it is. Alaska should be taking some hefty torpedo damage now. There we go. Let's get going down. Yeah, we're losing some of our carriers though. They've been hit heavily. And these stray torpedoes are not gonna help. We might lose this carrier. Oh no, not that's a bad time to spawn while the torpedo is about to impact. Oh, he's still alive. What is our spawn point? Are we low still? Sorry. It is, it is a genuinely fun event. It is a bit laggy, but I think that's just purely because of the limitations of War Thunder. Like, I mean... It is incredibly cinematic. That's, that's what it is for sure. Yeah, the likeness is kind of worse than it used to be. I'm kind of being useless at the moment. Because I'm about kind of out of position to be shooting an aircraft. Also, that one might be a good one. I've had to hit, shoot anything down with my main guns, and that is disappointing me. There we go. I just I want to get the old happy of an Oba spawn because as we go around this island, the two fleets will practically merge. And that's when it becomes the most dangerous. Oh, low flyers. Peter's in the water and those are going... Not gonna hit the carrier, that's good. I do love, I do think that he programmed these AI aircraft really well. The AI strike aircraft. More incoming from the front now. Um, the objective is just keep the carriers alive. At some point, we will all converge at the tip of the southern island, and then it's just an all outright brawl until whoever has the last carrier left to float. So, the thing is, what happens is we're going to meet each other in this little channel in between the two islands. The Japanese have the benefit of just being able to throw out torpedoes. Whilst the Americans have the better gunships. Again, for as far as I know, the main objective is sink the carriers. Capturing the airfields on land um, spawns in more attack waves, I think. As well as just gives you other spawn points. Although I think it might actually unlock some aircraft too. Because I know one of these southern airfields um, spawns in B-25s when it gets, gets captured. Oh, 
There's a fighter on that guy, so I can't shoot him. Although he needs to be very careful. Because our AI gunners will not hold fire. Torpedo. I can spawn the Tony, that is perfect. You know what, I might actually just eat the torpedo then. Yeah, I think destroyed aircraft also just despawn like that too. So it's a bit... I do have a Shim I don't have a Shimakaze in my lineup. Yep. Also, as you can see in the map, the spawn points follow the fleet around. So you, you are always on the front line even if you lose your ship. We're starting to lose a lot of AI ships, I think. There's an AI destroyer over there, but he's kind of far out. The torpedo is missing our carriers, good. Yeah, look at this. Torpedo rear? There, okay. That should be missing me. Yep, there's AI B-25s on now. Just looked onto one, yep. I'll just let my eye gunners deal with what's above. And I'll shoot at anything flying low. Also there are yeah, there is AI FE four thousand fives around as coastal batteries. Because the coastal batteries from naval here are a bit difficult to destroy. There we go. I don't quite know what's up with these aircraft just despawning, but I think that happens as soon as some of them that happens just as soon as they get shot down. Ooh, that Tony took some torpedoes. Our carriers are taking some big ol' hits too. I think that's as b just dumped his torpedo into the ground, so that shouldn't be a threat. Just gonna double check something real quick. Okay, we're fine. Oh, I'm heavy rubber banding. The other thing that's going to happen is as the two fleets start meeting each other, the AI strike waves stop for a second. So let's hope that that'll alleviate the lag a bit. Okay. That's arcade is doing that. That's the arcade uh, spotting distance. The person brave enough to fly a PBY over the fleet is quite, uh, quite something. Go! 
waiting to run clean off. Yeah. It is. You can crash in the game. The thing is, you can rejoin. The sad thing is that you lose all your spawn points. Um, if you manage to rejoin, though, do mention that you get... Actually, yeah. I'll, I'll mention that you crashed. Uh, and if I'm part of the... I think you just got bombed anyways. There's a repeater on the way. Um, that guy doesn't have a rudder. They're still flying relatively straight. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to J out. And I'm going to get in the, a... Into a... Tone. Uh, hold on. I do want to... Pop around my HE and HETF. Okay. We'll deal with the enemy destroyers first, although... I need to be careful of the enemy fleet. Our Congo is veering off course, and that is our collision course. We should be able to get past the Congo, I think, without being rammed too hard. Now, do we see their beat? Not quite. Mm, our carriers are starting to lag behind a bit. There we go. That is a enemy destroyer. I want to find their carriers. And then we'll just launch torpedoes at the carriers. Although an enemy destroyer can just shoot at the 8 inch guns, of course. Although he's being torpedoed by an HXK. Is he going to hit? Uh, B5 got him. Got something actually. Hold on. There goes Fletcher. Heavy and the air. That's the carrier. I see this giant smokestack. Come on, I just want to get a lock on him. So I can launch torpedoes on him. Oof, frame rate. Falling behind a bit. There we go, we got a lock on the enemy carrier. Okay, that is some heavy rubber banding. That is. I'm just gonna port that. Uh, okay, carries over there. Oh boy. Frames dropping into the tens, that is not good. Launching torpedo is going to be a bit of a chore, but why anyways? Away to go. Oh boy. Yeah, that is not good. Uh, 
航空攻撃警戒爆撃機前方8000メートル Yeah, it might be the case we actually need less ships. I'm going to deal with this AI destroyer over here. Oop. If I can hit him, that is. Yeah, that is bad. It's a real shame because, again, when you play this um, Saturday, it was smooth as could be. But this is, yeah, this is. Let me switch off my anti air. I'm switching it off to see if it lightens the load a bit. It seems to have helped a bit. The frames are stable at least. Still rubber banding in place like crazy. But yeah, the lag is. Hmm. That's a shame. Can I at all shoot this destroyer? Does not look like it. Yeah. Like for a ship, rubber banding isn't really the end of the world. You're just okay, you're, you're lagging, you're sitting in place. But if you're flying a plane with sim controls, that is rough. Really rough. Okay. So we are going to rerun this event. Return to hangar it is. Just hit him. And we'll try that again to see what happens if you play it on a different server. Because that was... Hmm. Trying to think what could have caused that. Because what you, what you tend to see to happen in Naval EC is that anti-air will completely lag out the lobby. So we are going to wait until the match is actually over and we can ready up again. Because I am going to continue trying out this event because it is really promising, it just has a lot of hiccups at the moment. Although, should I try a bit of a different lineup? Let me double check again. Yeah, it really won't help, that's for sure. I'm going to double check my, the iGen lineup. I kind of want to put Shimakaze in there. I think that could be fun. I think that is the crucial from a Shimakaze. It is not. That isn't either. It's just, it's just. But then I lose my anti airship at the start. Mm. I could also replace my Tone. But then I lose my heavy cruiser. What other heavy cruiser can I get? Because the good thing about Tone is just that all eight guns are at the front. A really good cluster of shells. The Mogami, I guess, but that doesn't have good anti-air. Only I had the Miyoko. And I could have used that instead. Mm, let's see, let's see. I think this lineup is still probably the best. Although I can replace the Nanoi here because I know the Akazuki is free. 
You know what? How how expensive is the? So that's fine. I'll just well just put it on another cruise slot. Why not? And because it would be a sin otherwise, I have to expert the crew. But that's going to be a bit pricey. But I played naval, so I have more than enough SL. There we go. We can ready up again. I think anybody who's watching us already, already knows how to join. So I'm not going to repeat it all so you can see it in the YouTube chat if you scroll up a bit. Well, the, thing, the good thing about this test we're doing today is that there's a lot of people in it. You haven't had too many people the previous few days, previous few tests. So this is really a true stress test. You mean the Isuzu? The Sendai is not the one of the good anti-air. Um, but the Isuzu is not free is the problem. It's like, it's 20 spawn point cost, which is kind of funny. But I prefer the Akizuki anyways in anti-air firepower. I really like the 100 mils. Like, you know what, let me put up those lists again. If I can find both of them. And I'm putting it back on so everybody else can see it whilst we're waiting for the match to start up anyways. These are the lists of the ships. So of the all the zero-cost Japanese ships, the Akazuki is clearly the best. Isuzu doesn't cost that much, but I'd rather save up the spawn points for the Tone. Although, you know what? I should play the Aoba instead. I like the Aoba a bit more. Pittsburgh is too modern. Pittsburgh is in the post-war refit. And this is supposed to be a World War II event. Supposed to be. Yeah, a Pit a Pittsburgh's NTR is definitely over the top for this event. But you can see that they've they've taken into account the fact that the American crews are really potent in their SP costs. Um No. Because the two the two game modes are um Naval Arcade and Naval RB are vastly different game modes. Vastly different. Um, whilst the core mechanics are largely the same, the fact that you're slower, the fact you're less maneuverable, the fact your PDs are slower, I should not hit my microphone, I'm sorry for that, the fact that your PDs don't have as far as spotting detectability, the fact that your PDs don't reload unless you're on a cap, it is, they're wildly different game modes. If anything, if it's like, just try to get the core mechanics of gunnery and maybe even positioning, although that's again different between the two game modes. But if you get gunnery under control, try just try the two the game modes. Try to find which one you like more. If you prefer the, the markers of arcade and the, the cast mechanics, the stuff like that. The torpedo mechanics, the fact that the ships are more agile. If you prefer that over RB, that's perfectly fine. It's, it's not that you naturally progress into realistic battles. And the match has started again, so I'm switching it over to normal screen. But yeah. It's just I prefer realistic battles because you can be a bit sneaky. And because you have to manually identify ships. But yeah. So, we do this again. Because he's 70. Damn, that's expensive. 
So my goal is going to be getting into the Aoba. Mainly because the Aoba also has an air search radar and I want to see the madness that is that it is on my screen. Okay, we got an outside, outside spawn again, so we're going to turn in. Also, it doesn't matter too much because we'll have attackers coming in from above as well. And let's hope the servers aren't absolute potatoes now. This is a really cinematic event, though. Like, especially th thanks to the new and improved um, visual models for the carriers. It looks so much better. Although the aircraft still bounce on them funny. Crashed. Yeah, we settled on the Fletcher having no spawn point cost. A bit later it crashed to that statement. Because you, you know what the original ship was that had zero spawn point cost for the Americans in this airfield event? Like, the original zero spawn point cost American destroyer were the Clemsons. The Clemsons. In an, in an event filled with aircraft, and the only way to get spawn points for the first half of the match is to, sh to shoot an aircraft. That was just mad. So then... Yeah. Then we decided that the Alwyn would have been fine, but they said yeah, the Fletcher is fine as well. Zero. Especially if the, if the Japanese get an Akizuki for zero spawn point cost, the Americans can get a Fletcher. Also, this sun is just gorgeous. Gorgeous. Oh, look at that. That's screenshot worthy. If we can just angle it a bit better. Yeah, that looks good. Yeah, they're, they're not... Again, I, I think people really underestimate the effectiveness of TF shells. As, especially I have level 100 crews experted. I should get my Akazuki aced, really. I really should. Those shells are, are not, to be, not to be messed with. That's bold. How did, it get, how did he even get a lock on? Hello there, Gazi. He's doing well. Been joining this event run by Wingling at the moment. Okay. That is odd. Although it could also be them locking onto the aircraft and just overshooting. a player too. Let's shoot at the player because they tend to fly in a straight line. Ooh. There we go, rubber banding beginning again. Oh, 
There's also quite a lot of PBYs trying to come in for our straggler. Oh god, where did that wave come from? They're all players. That is not good. Come on. I'm surprised our AIs are not opening up on them. Oh god, we're gonna sink that carrier. Okay. They've definitely damaged that carrier. Doesn't seem to be sinking. Banning is really annoying. It might just be the, the sheer player count we have going on now that's causing it. Especially because we have a higher number of ships than we had before. There should be way more tracers in the air, but I think the game just can't keep up. That's a long-range torpedo drop from that aircraft. Oh, hello. How did you get there? Well, I'm not gonna leave, it's just sitting there. Just gonna mark him again. Come to a halt. I start shelling this Fletcher. Lag or no lag.
doing? Don't have enough spawn points for something more efficient. Thing is, I took a very limited load of HG shells. I think I'm gonna go on a hunt. Actually, me shooting an, enemy, an actual player ship gives me a lot of spawn points. Of course, the Fletcher is now going to try and shoot me. But that's fine. Oof. How did. How are they shooting that so many aircraft at once? I have way too few actual G shells loaded. About to run out. And then, we have to do what I despise doing and fire HTF at a service target. So one way to do it is to manually overrange it and just drag the cursor down, I think. Why is he not repairing his flooding? I see there's an a, there's a bomber coming in and I should have suppressed most of the NTR fire. I need to be very careful I don't splash him with the TF rounds though. Ooh, was it a torpedo hit on the front of his ship? Might have been. More than enough spawn points to spawn a ton in now. But I want to make sure this Fletcher sinks. 3%, come on. You should be flooding. Okay, 
I'm just gonna keep suppressing him. Because I do not want a Fletcher behind us. Okay, I just shot an aircraft. He's getting point again. So I have failed my job of suppressing him. I still have plenty of shells where these came from. Although it seems that the testing is going to be terminated pretty soon by what I'm reading in the chat. You know what I'm going to do? I'm going to hold fire. See if he pushes up again. Oh, he'll probably want to fully repair before pushing up again. It seems nobody has gone through the effort of torpedoing the Alaska that spawns. Oh. My lag is letting off. He's pushing forward again. I can tell because of the torpedo lead indicator. Do you really want to do that? Yeah, you need to dump quite a few torpedoes into it, I'm not gonna lie. It takes a lot. About as many as it takes for me to just think this... Fletcher. Although, with me knocking out his turrets, he should be going down. There's a lot of aircraft around, I see. Yeah, I think he's flooding because of lack of crew. But I want to bring him down a few more crew percentages just to be sure. Yeah, he's going down. When I see him sink, I'm going to J out and spawn the Aoba. Yep, he's sinking. Oh. Game froze. Please, please don't crash. Please. <laughs> but I think I, uh, I've run into a crash. Which, yep, there it goes. Freeze detected. And that's going to be a blank screen for you for a second. Whilst I reboot my game. Oh, just I was about to spawn in the Aoba, and of course when I rejoin the match I will have lost all of my spawn points. Oh well. So give me just a hot second to start the game again. That is, that is really anticlimactic. Climactic, yeah. Oof. I should be able to rejoin fairly quickly. But I can put that in his Discord that I crashed again. Um, but I'm also going to mention I, I crashed practically the second I was going to get the kill on that Fletcher, wasn't I?
Then we should be booting up. And I really need to find a um, scene to do when my game actually crashes. So you guys don't have to look at this blank screen. There we go. Everything's loading. We go to custom battles. We sort by simulator battles. There we go. Boss with dragon. I'm on the correct team and I go to battle. Yeah. But yeah, I'm going... Oh, hold on. I still have my spawn points. Let's go. Look at the radar. Look at the radar. I have no anti-air shells on the main guns, but that's fine. That torpedo is going to be less fine, though. Um, oh, of course, they're going to return to the lobby now to test another version. Um, I just wanted to look at the funny radar screen. So we are returning to the hangar. We are trying another... Yes. And we are going to try again. Again, this is still testing for this event, so this is just going to happen. We're going to just... Oh, we're going to interrupt test again. Although we've been going at it for quite a while now. An hour and 20 minutes. But I genuinely think that this is a great event in the making. A really good event in the making. Like, if they manage to iron out all the lag, if they manage to just fix all of those issues and actually get a smooth event running with this concept, it would be amazing. Especially because he's just, I think he's going to just make the custom battle available to the public if, if, if it's of course after the event after the official event launch I think we'll make the link public or I'll be able to get the link out of him that's for sure for this specific mission yes um, the thing is Wingling is actually making this mission for somebody um, I think they were here a moment ago. It's uh, classy packs or something. I don't think they're here anymore, but it's it's from this guy. That's the guy he was with. Is the guy still here himself? Yeah, he's making this event for somebody else. And it's just a yeah, Pacific event. Ooh, I would love one as well. But I think that Wingman is definitely not good planning on doing this all the time. Because he's he's already spent a lot of time in this. A hell of a lot of time. And I don't know nearly enough CDK wizardry to, ta to try it myself. I think Wingling is going into the battle to just try and get this guy out. Not sure. No, he should, I don't think he does. Yeah, like the the Wingling, like the, the air sim guys, are some really dedicated people. And again, Wingling is now making this event. Crab Nation, this guy is also a sim content creator. He hosts sim aircraft events every weekend. Like like aircraft specific, like he'll host 
Let me actually look through the Discord what his most recent events are that he's doing. Uh, like, he's going to do an event with BFP40s, P38 Lightnings, P24s. Like every weekend, um, I think every Saturday, he hosts aircraft specific events in Sim. And they can be really fun, although I think he's Hawaiian, so his time zones are ungodly for me. Though recently he's been doing events that are actually closer to midnight for me, which are more than manageable. I think we're supposed to ready up, but I'm just going to hold off. Yeah, I think we're ready up. So now we just wait for them to launch the mission again. My squadron is always accepting members. I'm nowhere near capacity yet. Also, you can add naval requirements, and I really want to add them, but if you save them, it doesn't save. Soon. Soon. Because the thing as well, I am, don't think I get near... Nearly enough um, squadron activity for the full points. Also, I'm, I'm not really that active anymore. I need to ready up again. Oh, now we're starting. But yeah. Um, the thing is, if you actually set requirements and then open the squadron up to like no... Um, what do you call it? Again, now currently I accept um, people that, that want to join, right? I, I manually accept everybody once they've requested to join. However... If you disable that feature where people can just invite themselves in, um, apparently that's, that becomes visible to more people. So that's something I really want to do, but I only want to do that once I can put naval requirements in place. So I really hope to get that function operational. Okay. Now, uh, is that Fletcher going to... I'm very tempted to almost do it myself to go to that corner. I don't. Don't really want to. We'll just stay into the thick of the combat. So I think what he did now is because they were FE 4005s for coastal artillery, he just removed them. I think that's what he did. Be rude. What? Exactly changed in this version again. Because I do want to know what actually changed. I think it's just the removal of some more some high quality assets. No castle guns, okay. So hoping that that'll um and they remove some ships. To see if that'll counteract the lag. I think, yeah, Ooh, 30, yeah, that'll, be, that'll do it. Because the cover for the Coastal Artillery will also oh, high detailed models. And less ships also have less anti air, which should be less clutter too. Have they? They have. Damn it. Oh well, that's not that we really needed the battleship. This radar is just taunting us. Give all their ships their functional radar, damn it. Let's look at this.
We're having a uh, conversation on the runway, apparently. I really want to try and light up that <laughs> DBF. And now that Wingling is no longer on the ground, I should be able to. Yeah, classic packs. That's the guy they're making the event for. I think so that he can um, stream it someday. Or, or run some kind of event. Surely I can hit that guy at some point. Although I might want to switch to just a regular high explosive. Let's not shoot our Shokaku in the bridge. There's the enemy Alaska. Interesting that whatever target I've selected is actually just up on the minimap. It's quite an interesting thing to happen. No lag yet, and the enemy aircraft are incoming. That's a good sign, a very good sign even. Because the rubber banning started happening when all of our anti air opened up. There we go. Slapped it out of the air. Our guns are stuck on that Tony for some reason. There we go. Need to be careful of our F1M in the back there, but my shell should be way clear of him. Oh, bombs there. Just passively shooting down the dive bombers. Torpedo from the rear. We're safe. Let's see more though, I think. Seeing this aircraft just disintegrate is very satisfying. Look at them fall apart. Through the funnel smoke of the Tony. Yeah, the frame rate is suffering a bit, but there's no rubber banding at the moment. Good. That's when I just took a massive hit. Clipped the target I completely didn't intend to hit. That's fine, I guess. I think there's a torpedo in the water, though, so I need to be careful. He's going in from the front, that's brave. And there he goes. Is that a, something I can destroy? Hmm. That is interesting. 
Okay, I need to dodge those torpedoes. That is definitely something I need to do. There's an AI again. That Corsair I'm worried about. Because I'm on carry. Actually, I should be more worried about his torpedoes. Turn away from them and just slow down so we let them pass. And hopefully, don't get run over by the carrier. Although, all those torpedoes are going to smack straight into that carrier, aren't they? Yeah. That's not good. The lag is stable. I haven't had any rubber banding issues just yet. That's good. Very good. Oop. Banding. But it seems to have already alleviated. Okay, where is the last? There's the last guy. Mm, I need to get on the right hand side of the fleet. Because that's where the Alaska is going to pass. What are my spawn points at the moment? Not very stellar. Let's slow down for our squadron mate here. Yeah. I should have intercepted those repeaters, you're right. Speaking of, oh, this one's gonna miss anyways. Those are B-25s. P-40s, okay. Quite sure what P4. Oh, the P4s are going to intercept our stuff, aren't they? So, yeah, the, the capturing of the airfields are actually really important because they'll spawn different airwaves in. So, it's really bad that we don't have any airfields at the moment. So Corsair on the top of my screen there for a second and Corsair is going to be really scary. Come on, never mind. Alaska's over there. Some torpedoes already being launched in this direction. I... Uh, yeah, that is... three. That's kind of bad. If it persists, I'd put it a higher number, but it seems to have come past again. There we go, once you spread out the Alaska.
And it's cleared out again. Yep. I spoke too soon. Why do so many of them already have cruisers? Damn. And because I captured the airfields, of course. Now I'm getting closer to my cruiser spawn. Or at least the Shimakaze spawn for only after to repeat it straight. Um, what aircraft do we really have to attack? Nothing really, because we're on the far side of the fleet. Yeah, players using smoke might actually be a bit of a problem. Alaska's already been. I think he just ate some more torpedoes. That torpedo should miss me. Sinking the Alaska is also actually a good source for spawn points. I okay, I do have no spawn points for Shimakaze. I'm gonna shoot the Alaska just for a bit more spawn points. I'm also going to launch another torpedo salvo. Torpedoes do not reload, good to know. Mm, yeah, shooting the Alaska is actually not getting any spawn points. Panning again. Weather change, but that shouldn't affect it too much. Okay, let's switch back to anti air duties, although with the rubber banning that's next to impossible. Torpedo hit his bow, that's bad. And he's sinking. And it seems I'm going to eat a torpedo as well. There's Alaska just being lifted out of the water by the flooding. Oh, that's gonna be bad. Yeah, that's bad. Although I'll survive it. Alaska's been sunk. Spawn points are still kind of bad. Lag is also pretty bad. Uh, hopefully they, they can fix it. Because last time we tested it genuinely, it, it ran smooth as butter. We then just had a hiccup with the spawn point stuff. But that is why you run these tests, so that when the actual day comes, when they want to livestream the event fully, it won't be a stuttering mess. And in the meantime, I get my kick out of playing the Akizuki as an anti-air destroyer. Why it puts it as a 5, or even 6. Because I do not think I'm moving forward, and that's not only because I destroyed my own engine. Well, the torpedo destroyed my engine, but you know what I mean.
Yeah, the thing is, like, rubber banding on a ship again is not that bad. It is a bit annoying that you don't move forward, that the shallows don't seem to register smoothly. But I can't imagine trying to fly with sim controls in this kind of lag. And that's the thing that really needs to be fixed. It's for the pilots that this, that this doesn't happen. I think most people who've played EC enough know that this, this lag is just how to deal with it. Sim, sim pilots, that's gonna be rough. I'm curious what causes it though. Oh, and I think it's it is end of testing. I'm going to stay in here for just a little while longer. Because the thing is, okay, the test is now over. Wingling has his data that he wants, or I hope he has. But we're still free to stay in here and see what happens. And I... I'm going to stay in here for a few more minutes, see if the lag smooths out eventually. I'm going to spawn points for the Oba again. I am going to give my, my feedback though, because I think the spawn point cost at the moment is perfect. You get into a heavy cruiser by the time the fleets meet. Yeah, this lag is quite painful. We did have a Congo? Apparently we had a Congo. Okay. Seeing these aircraft just come in and dive bomb is really good though. It's such a shame of the lag. Ah, that yeah, that Congo, that's right. The the attacking, that's right. I forgot about that. Okay, just bounced off the carrier. I think this is good enough of an introduction to this event, so I'm going to leave it here for this event as well and go back to the hangar and finish off with, an Amer with the Italian 5-0 lineup that I still haven't done tonight. And that will then have to be it for tonight. But yeah, I just wanted to shed some light on this event going on on Wingling's Discord every now and then, as I do think it is a pretty good one. They have a lot of potential if they're going to just smooth out all the bumps. And I am going to do the last lineup for today, Italian 5-0, where I'm actually going to play the 5-0. And then we'll call it that for tonight. Same, I think that's also the reason I actually wanted to do it on stream so people get introduced to it because if you if you don't really follow our sim or even any of the content creators you might never have noticed that this was even a thing so that's why i wanted to shed some light on it because it is as a naval player that is the exact kind of custom battle i crave for lots of aircraft lots of ai ships shells going everywhere exactly what i want Although I am heavily biased because it is in a Pacific theater event and I really like the Japanese ships. I can imagine for somebody who likes the German or British ships that it's not really that interesting to them. But for me it's exactly what I wanted. 
Yeah, the, the AI bombers, like the first ever test we did, they were pretty bad. They all came from the same direction, clustered in one group. They rarely ever dropped their ordnance. And then he, he worked his magic, and now the AI bombers come in attacks, attack waves from their own aircraft, of course, but from different angles, altitudes. They actually dropped the torpedoes pretty competently. I think it's, it's done really well. I just hope they can work out those issues. But now, suffering with Bartolomeo Colioni. Bartolomeo Colioni. Not stumbling over my own tongue this time. 5-3. With Harukaz, it's, uh, it's up there with 5-0, so that doesn't matter. Also, we're luckily finishing up tonight with the best crew voices in the game. Up tier to 5-7, I see. Ah, uh, and I'm going to launch my plane, which is the funny Italian bow launched one. There we go. And we are flying over to Alpha, if I don't crash the plane. Yeah, it's, it's, it's definitely a great event if they can iron out the lag issues. But it's it's uncertain whether the lag issues are server-side or just because of the custom battle file, because of certain assets on it. And I really hope it isn't server-side, it's not as something as finicky as that. Cruiser should be fine for the time being, I'm just going to double-check that I'm not running myself aground. I'm going to run into the Detroit, am I? I will. I find it funny they sort of modeled the gunner camera for it. Also, I think they just literally plunked the camera in there. But there's no cockpit. Although the virtual one isn't too bad, I guess. Yeah, the, the issue most... Actually, no, you can do that pretty easily. Yeah. The thing is, you have to you have to have a good map for that kind of stuff as well. This is not the same. This is the, this is the RO hold on, forty three, and I think this one is actually faster than the Tech Three one. I'm not sure, but they're not the same aircraft, which is kind of weird that they're not the same aircraft. But at the same time, I guess that's fine. Smooth as silk. It does. It is not that difficult to do shore bombardment. It's just that if you want to do a custom map, right, to do that kind of stuff, as soon as there's a hill, you can't shoot anything anymore. Um, a very good map, if you get it to work in the CDK, is something like Iwo Jima. It's a really good map if you want to do coastal bombardment kind of stuff, because it doesn't have that many hills to hide behind for the tanks. If you think that is a good thing or a bad thing, that's up to you. But yeah. Ooh, we're flooding. Luckily it was a flood in the front. It's nothing critical. Slow down a bit. Almost a significant emotional event here. My aircraft has been shot down, but that's perfectly fine. We got a cap, and that's all I wanted. What I really don't like about this cruiser is its reload. 
Like, the early Italian cruisers are genuinely not fun. They're really, really difficult to play. And this is the same reload as the Kudo, as that um, Krasny Kafka I played at the beginning of the stream, or almost the beginning. But these are not 180mm guns, they're 6 inch guns, 152s. 18 second reload, and this is with, like, not that. Eh, it's, it's pretty bad of a, of a crew. Although it's experted, so it's not that bad. I'm going to have to check in the hangar again what the actual reload is, what it can be at worst and best. Yeah, most Italian turrets seem cramped. Although the thing is, the turrets themselves aren't really that small, the guns are just incredibly close together. Okay, that's one kill on a Moffat. Like I, also, I still don't think this is a bad cruiser. But the reload speed is really noticeable. And like none of the other Italian cruisers really suffer from reload issues. Other than this one. Detonation, always good to see. Good firing arcs on the turrets though. Very good firing arcs. That's the Hawkins. I will say, I think there's a surprising amount of actual human players on each team tonight. I don't think they're that well armored. Let me actually check on the stat card. No, they're 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 not armored. Which is yeah. But I'll check again in the hangar as well. But I don't think they're, they're, they're all that armored. Our summers sailed past Bravo. Which is okay. Why would you just sail past it? Oh well, another capture point for me to go to, I guess. With a friendly. With a friendly trying to get into. Charlie. That's not good. That's not good at all. Because that's Frank Knox's ult. Never mind, Frank Knox got destroyed. That's good. That's very good, actually. So now we can go to Bravo. Is that another Moffat I see? Almost good enough to be an Amarak, was just a little bit too far behind. Yeah, there's been, there's been a, su a surprising amount of actual player ships around, that's good to see. Um, it is a... not a part, it is just an armored layer. I don't know how to describe it well. It's, it's just some ships have anti-frag armor. Meaning that the, um, yeah, I'll, I'll explain it again once I'm in the hangar while I can explain it better with visuals. Actually, I can explain it as well here. If you look at the stat card, you see that the hull and superstructure has armor, right? 
Um, that is, first of all, that is not armored steel, that is structural steel. The, st the steel values you see in the stat card for hull and superstructure. Which is, I think, 0.8 of armored steel? I don't remember, but there's a certain modifier, a, a D modifier. So the, the armor, like the hull armor on this, of course not counting the armored plates, is less than 25 millimeters. So all it is, is, yeah, it's that hull armor plus the armor you see on it. I believe. Yeah, it's plus. It is not a replacement. It's not like... Um, I'll go back, I'll definitely go in the hangar and show you, but... It's, like, it's not like the armor plates are their own thickness. Anything that isn't shown on the X-ray viewer is whole, is just the whole thickness. No, the armor plate is on top of the whole thickness, I believe. But I'm not entirely certain. You know, I can actually easily check that. See, I can really easily check that if, that if that's the case or not. But I'll have to do that in the hangar. That is Cadiz. We can Amorak Cadiz in one shot. Is that too much lead? Uh, maybe not. Ooh, it wasn't, but I didn't hit the Amorak quite hard enough. I'm also being shotted by a Moffat in front. But I want to just try and finish off this Cadiz. And then we swap over to the Moffat. Ding! There goes the Amorak. And another Amorak. Ooh, that was a torpedo going off, wasn't it? it certainly felt like it. Yeah. I think I have seen that video, but it's been quite a while. But yeah, I, I think I know what you mean. That's looking good. A bit too far behind and a bit too low. I think I've lost... No, I haven't lost my rangefinder, that's good. Those are too far... No, those are looking good. I got Amorakt. Okay, I didn't know this thing could be Amorakt like that. But now the actual starter cruiser. And let's take the good one, because of course why wouldn't we? I'm kind of cheating by by using the Bartolomeo as the 5 0 like the starter cruiser. Because Regolo or Etna are probably the first cruisers you'll get with Italy. And they're not... not Colleoni does have decent firepower, if not a bit of a slow reload. But these ships... I don't like the 135. I don't like it at all. Yes, they can they can ricochet. I think actually hold on, they can ricochet over the water surface as well if I can break lock. And if I can showcase it. Actually, they ricochet. And I don't think that's just a visual effect. Is it just a visual effect? I don't remember. But they do ricochet off the water. They they can ricochet. It's usually very unlikely for shells to ricochet, but they can ricochet. Ah, shells to waste, so I can do this anyways. Hmm. You, you won't often see, you just won't often see shells ricochet, but you can do it. Yes, that's right. Um, I think I streamed that update as well and tried to do it with coastal vessels. Stream the death server. Oh, I keep forgetting this ship actually has the funny quad stack torpedo tubes. Like that. Hmm. 
Is it only can we reload for the front tubes? No. Or yes, yes it does. It only carries reload for the front tubes. Bersaglio individuato. Caccia torpediniere. 280. Just keep it up and victory will be ours. Now this game. And that'll be the stream for tonight as well. A good match to end on. So, what am I going to do Friday? What am I going to do Friday? Oh. What task did I do? Oh, did the task open up today? So it did. Good. I still have to do a lot for this, though. Okay. What am I going to do today? Well, we the death blocks have started up again, although today it was for an event, so I don't really count that. Hopefully we'll see more death blocks, something more interesting on coming days. Uh, other than that... I might just grind something I want to grind on Friday, just keep going on, on maybe... Mm, I might actually do the Russian cruises for a stream, to keep the Russian Blue Water 3 a bit, go further than that 3 a bit. Because I've, I've done the German cruisers way too much, and I'd rather play them off stream as well. So yes, I think Friday, Russian cruisers. Then that's about it. Thank you all for watching. I hope that events go becomes more streamlined. And I hope to stream it in the future. And I'll see you all on Friday.